one. Okay, yes. How do you feel about labeling uh, GMO on our food? Okay, so let's start with uh, let's say selected how should you go down the way? A wonderful question it came up uh, during the session and a number of articles written about it, a lot of uh, TV time on it. And my position has been this. When it came before to have one was it was built to label it, that didn't go anywhere. It didn't go anywhere because both the house chair and myself decided not to go forward with it. The house chair was interested in discussing it. The other one was sort of a resolution, basically asked about the same question. I'll tell you why I feel the way I do about the GMO issue. You know, there's been a lot of um, information given up. And what uh, a line from, I think it was Mark, uh, Mark Twain said, it isn't that uh, people know a lot of things. It's that what they know, a lot of it just ain't so. And so the question is on the GMO question. I think we need to find out what is really um, the, uh, you won't get a definitive answer, number one. There, there's information on both sides. But I do recall, and this is what is in my position, some years back we had a scare on tofu. Remember that? Soybeans. And so people quit buying tofu because it was perceived to be bad for you. Some tofu companies went out of business. And some of us are still trying to recover from that. And so I think this is one of those issues about labeling something. Because when you label something, people think something's wrong with it. And I think that's not where we should go. I think we need to better educate the public so that they make their own decisions. But we don't need to go and arbitrarily label or not label the things. Because right now, there's no law preventing anyone from labeling or not labeling these products. Not at a federal level and not at a state level. Thank you. I have a little knowledge about this because we had actually tackled a similar problem when I was in the legislature a few years back, and it was the papayas that uh, were radiated. And what they found out was that uh, the radiated papayas did better on the market because it lasts longer. And people didn't detect a better difference in the taste of the fruit. I think this, you know, you hit the, the nail on the head when you said, you know, you're free to label what you want or not label. So if this is the case, then, you know, if a person were to, say, produce a certain product like papaya and choose not to label it, then he might be at a disadvantage, one might say, from the person who does label it as being general free. So that's how the open market works. You know, people maybe, like he said, might be intimidated by the fact that we uh, come down and actually legislate that you must do something like you must label. I think we should let the free market exist. The question is whether we should mandate the labeling of GMO products. I'm against it. I don't think it's a good idea to call for more government mandates when we don't have the ability to regulate and enforce the mandates we already have in place. We barely have enough inspectors to check for rats in our marketplaces and pesticides in our foods as it is. Every time we impose a new mandate, you require, you would require in this case to have GMO police uh, in every food land and supermarket to enforce the, the, the law. I would be generally against government mandates of this kind. And what I would encourage, as our previous two speakers did, is encourage non-GMO products to label themselves as non-GMO, to be organic, to be uh, GMO free, and that to me really puts the decision in the hands of the consumers where it belongs. I think of this issue, I, I, I generally am opposed to 
to uh, more regulations that are, that are burdensome to the producers and the, tax, the taxpayers. But I think on this issue, when you're dealing with a genetically modified, uh, I guess, organism in, in the food supply, I think that it should be labeled uh, just for consumer information. Uh, but I think it speaks to a more important issue, and I think what, what the issue is, is uh, we need to let the free market, we need to allow the, the small farmers, the small farmers markets here in the state of Hawaii, the small producers, we need to deregulate to allow their businesses to flourish and bring back more locally grown produce that is, uh, that is organic and, um, you know, offers consumers a choice in this matter because, you know, we only have uh, around 10 days worth of uh, food on this island uh, in the event that all shipping stopped. And uh, that's a big problem because in any kind of nat natural disaster or, uh, you know, world uh, disaster like a war or something like that, we're, we're going to be in a lot of trouble with food supplies here in this island. There was in the National Guard and a lot of our drills focus on securing uh, Costco's and Safeways in the event of something like that happening. And I think what we need to do is start focusing on more locally grown uh, produce and uh, you know, beef cattle and things like things of that nature. But I think what happens is a lot of the local farmers are getting pushed out of business by these big businesses like Monsanto and some of these other big farming companies. And I think what we need to do is we need to bring back local farming and we need to encourage and more local farming and some of the some of the ways that I think we can do that is we can talk to the local farmers uh, and we can talk to the people that have raised cattle in this uh, state and the milk producers in this state and I think we can just talk to them and say what well, why why is the small farming why why are you having so many problems um, producing food here in the state of Hawaii at, a, at an economical price and I and I wager a bet that uh, a lot of their problems that they're having are because of government regulations imposed and often lobbied by big business and big farming like Monsanto. Thank you.